time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. So what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families of field. Welcome back to another Up North Journal minicast. We are sitting in the cabin. What's going on, my man Dan? Not much. Just another minicast we're about to perform here. Something you won't hear on our main show, but you're going to hear it here in a few minutes on our minicast. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to let it fly. I'm ready to let you hear it. And now, got... remember these minicasts that we do. We try to keep them short and sweet and kind of to the point. Well, okay. So you're limiting to me to what I, I would I, ne- I would never limit the boss to his amount of speech. <laughs> All right. Well, we also have Robin Elhaver with us tonight on the phone. Robin, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. All right. So we have a new hunter online with us. We're rolling into the hunting season. We've had early goose start. We've had small game season start. We've had some youth things and other things happen this weekend. Dan, have you bought your hunting license yet? I have not. Because I'm not allowed to go out yet. Well, what's that got to do with anything? i got to wait for the season. Well, you can buy your license early. I know, but I just haven't done it yet. Okay, so you, you just put it off. I just put it off. Okay, I've got I've got my general hunting license from when I bought my turkey license. I still need to get my I got deer. that. I got the okay. base. So you got the base, but you need to get the deer license. Right. Robin, I see uh, online that you actually picked up your tags. I did pick up my tags this weekend. Okay. So you were a first-time hunter, and you get to go out and you buy tags. That's got to be exciting. Uh-huh. It was very exciting for me um, until I got there. Oh, wait, wait, what do you mean? Well, the gentleman that was helping me out, he was a little confused. And uh, he wasn't actually from Michigan. He was new to Michigan. Um, so he was repeatedly kept explaining to me how our tags were different. And they really weren't a tag. It was just a piece of paper. And I was like, well, no, it kind of should be like a tag with a sticker and stuff. And he's like, well, you'll see. It's just a piece of paper. In Virginia, we have a book. And he proceeded to, like, open his imaginary book. And he explained that they tear it out. And he showed me how you tear out a piece of paper. And In his imaginary book. Did he have imaginary <laughs> friends with him, too, to help him go hunting with? <laughs> he did not. But it, it was definitely it was definitely an experience. Okay, so so she, here she is, a first time hunter, mm-hmm. going to go get a license. She's ready to rock and roll and excited. She knows what she needs to get. Yeah, might need a little help, whatever it might be. And the person that's going to help her knows nothing. Zero. Yeah, I've, I've experienced that more than once. I have too. How do you deal with it? I just kind of okay. So mine happened uh, actually. It happened when I was just trying to obtain um, getting the point for a bear and a point for elk. <laughs> That's even worse, man. That's all I wanted, really. Yeah. That's all yeah. I wanted. At yeah. the time, I, I don't know what I was doing. I was going somewhere, and I pulled over one of the, the a big box store and ran in because I knew they had licenses. And, and the lady, I had this uh, look of, uh-oh. I have to fill out a license. Yes. And I'm like, I just need a preference point for elk and a preference point for bear. All I want. And she looks at you cross-eyed and goes, what's that? Pretty much. And said, uh, okay, 
So I kind of helped her, and she still couldn't get it. She called somebody. Mm-hmm. Still couldn't get it. And I said, you know what? After about 15, 20 minutes, I said, I'll take care of it. Mm-hmm. And I left. And ever since then, I now buy them online. I do my preference points online just to avoid hassle because buying a license in the state of Michigan, uh, with, with if you don't go to a sporting goods store, if you go to a big box store or a regular quote-unquote outdoor sporting goods store, you're going to get nowhere real fast. Um, I've had problems with every place I've went to except for Cabela's. You know, I mean, it's no secret we work with Cabela's, but I'm serious. Every other place I've went to, I've had nothing but issues. What's the difference? Cabela's has people that work in the outdoor industry. They hunt, they fish, they understand. Yep. Pretty it's, simple, isn't it? The other place places have kids that are still popping pimples and don't know the trigger from the barrel on a gun. They don't know the hook from a reel on a fishing rod. And you'd think playing with computers and phones, they'd know how to work one, but they or, don't. Or at least be given some kind of training? Instruction. Or, or the better one, the one that sticks in my craw the most, was when I went to, I, I went to Meyer. okay? I'm just going to call it the way it is. And and I because I had it out with these people, it was a weekend when they started giving away their Free hunting license for the youth. Okay? Oh, yeah. They, yeah. They just did that. They just did that here last weekend. But this was about four or five years ago when they first started this program. And you can imagine the line. I come home on my lunch hour to get my kids, take them up to our local store, and proceed to wait in line. And as I got up there in line, I mean, you know, there's a couple people had me, and I waited my turn. And then once I got to the lady at the counter, she was probably 50, 60 years old. And I wanted, the other people were just checking out, getting this, that, and the other. Okay, we're in the sporting good department. Yep. It came my turn. I said, I'd like, I got this coupon here for this child, and coupon for this one. I wanted to get them their deer license. And she just kind of goes, oh, okay. And we start the process, and she pulls out the book to figure this out. And on the front of the book that year was, it was uh, I believe, when the one of the youth here shot a huge elk. Okay. Oh, what a pretty animal. It's so sad it had to die. (laughs) You're going to take these kids and let them kill a deer? Did she really say that? Oh, yes. And I said, (laughs) yes. I said, we're going to kill as many as we can, (laughs) legally. (laughs) And I said, we're going to eat them. Oh, dude, I was pissed. And this this (laughs) kept on. And she just kept on begroaning on us of how we were going to kill these pretty innocent animals. And I said, look. If you can't take care of me, go get somebody who can. Because I said, I'm not going to... And the people behind me, you know, the, were, were hunters as well. You know, they had their kids with them. And we're all getting enraged here. <laughs> and uh, I finally had to get a manager over there. And I said, look. And I made a complaint. I was like, you either get people back here that know what they're doing. You know, I said, or I'll take my business somewhere else. And I said, matter of fact, I said, I, if you want... I said, refund everything. And I said, and I'll walk out this door right now. I had had it in... Uh, I said, I don't know what you're going to do with the lady, but I said, I tell you what, you got an anti-hunter working in sporting goods and selling hunting license. I said, there's something wrong here. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, now, that tops my story. Uh, no, um, yours is actually pretty good, too, because I like the imaginary oh. book that he was trying to show you that I, we don't have books in Michigan, pal. Yeah. And this is the part that, that really gets me is if you're going to work somebody in the sporting goods. Train them. Train them. Yeah. It, I, know, I know that system is not hard. Yeah. It's all click and, yeah. click and print, yeah. I do believe. Yeah, that's all it is. Well, matter of fact, I've had it so many times. As they're going through the process, I will read the question off as they're reading it off, and, and I'll, I'll just answer yes, no, yes, no. Oh. And, and they're like, well, what, what, what? and then I'll say, oh, you skipped one. I said, well, you got to do the waterfowl, you know, migratory birds. Oh, yeah. Oh, but you're getting this license. I go, it doesn't matter. I said, I have to answer that question. Otherwise, if I come back to get my waterfowl license, I can't get it. I said, check, yes. You know, I mean, I know the system better than them. I tell them, I say, look, you want me to come back there? I'll just run through it real quick and be done. So after this, Robin's probably going to be able to, to walk behind the counter and, 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 and show them how to do it. Show them how to do it. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So how long did this take for you to actually get that piece of purple paper sticker? Oh, actually, that part didn't really take very long at all. I mean, he just he ran through a few questions and then was like, okay, so you did take the class? And I was like, uh, yep, took the class. And he was good. And that's the other thing. Now you take the class and you don't have to show proof that you took the class. What's the point in taking the class? Right. Yeah, I won't even back, go into that. Back when we, we started, we had to give them the number off of our tag. Well, you, you, well, you, you yeah, had. I, 
your hunter assumed safety certificate. that you could, they just could pull it up. Mm-mm. No, it's because they took my license, and I just kind of assumed they cross referenced it. Oh no, no, they didn't. I don't think so because now before you used to used to have to carry that orange tag with you, mm-hmm. or I had to get a replacement one. You had yeah. to have that with you. Yeah, but then or your previous year's license. Correct. You had to have one or the other. Right. But now, now, and hunting out of state, when I went to Colorado in 08, I had to have my hunter safety certificate, which I had lost. So I had to have a new one sent to me and printed. Oh, yeah. Okay. A, a replacement yeah, card yeah. sent. So when I showed up in Colorado, they said, we need to see proof of hunter safety. You know, even though I was at that time 42 or something like that. Yeah. See, and now, and, and Robin got, 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 has hers now. Got hers. Got hers. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm talking Southern. Wow. But you have yours now, so don't lose it. Yeah, yeah no, I'm not going to lose it. Trust me, that's what I said. They give me this little, they, they give me this little pouch to keep it in. Yeah, those work like last li- for about a year. Your license and stuff can fit in there, too. Yeah. Kind of. You had to, like, fold it in half, but the concept was right. Yeah. My, so mine going the It's bright hun- orange, so I won't lose it. Right yeah. on. I know. So... She had an experience. You've had an experience. I I've think had everybody an experience. has. And it's like, really, people? But it depends on where you go. And it seems like it gets worse depending on what store you go to. You know, it, it's either a guy back there who doesn't hunt or fish or a lady who doesn't hunt or fish or that doesn't is not computer literate or you get some young people back there that, that don't have a clue as well and, and don't know the system. Or you get an anti-hunter like me. <laughs> that is, that is <laughs> bizarre. I, I don't think I've ever had an anti my kids, as Jake and I think Jake and Madeline or Jake and McKenzie, and they're looking at me like, Dad, is this for real? So, if anybody's listening that works as in management at any of these stores that sell hunting licenses, please do us all a huge favor, educate your people so they know how to print licenses out and do it effectively and do it fast and get us out of there. That's all I got. It's all computerized. It isn't rocket science. It yeah. used to be in a book. It used to be real easy. I know. <laughs> all right. Well, that's our rant for this minicast. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.